Hi there, my name is Jessica Drossen and I create actions, textures, and overlays for photographers. Today I want to walk you through the new JD Illuminations Instant Overlays. Now, the first thing I want to address is what's an instant overlay? An instant overlay is an overlay that you don't have to place. Traditional overlays are JPEGs or ping files that you would grab out of a folder, select them, pull them onto the image that you're editing, and then change their mode perhaps, reposition them to fit your image space, and then add a mask and you would integrate them in that way. I was searching for a way to speed my workflow up because I just love using overlays, but I thought is there a way to do this so that it can go a little bit faster and I can cut out all of the in-between grabbing and resizing, etc. So I've created a bunch of different auditions. There's 32 overlays in all, and I have six different auditions so that you can look at what they're doing to your image until you get to really know these overlays and maybe have some that you just want to pull up directly from the menu below. So I'm going to go ahead and select Audition All, and I'm going to hit this little play button down there. Now, depending on the computer you're using and how much RAM you have allocated to Photoshop and how many application programs you have open, this first audition that runs all 32 of the overlays in the background could take a little bit of time. You might need to be patient, go grab a cup of coffee, etc. You don't need to use the audition all. If it's taking too long for you, you can simply go into the overlays that you feel most comfortable with. But I love to audition all of them, and I think it helps me to build and edit when I'm working with the straight out of camera image as I am here. And I just want to quickly mention that if you're working with an image that you've already edited, you might want to lower the default opacity of some of these overlays. I've set them all up for you so that with just a click of the button, you get an effect. But I've sort of imagined that you would be using these with a straight out of the camera image. So the defaults are set a little higher. So if you've already edited an image and you're just looking for a little extra something to provide depth or color, you might want to lower the opacity. All right, so I'm going to just quickly run through and edit with this. I want to add a little warmer color. And so I'm going to look for the tone that I want to go with. And in this case, I really like how blended mocha is working. So I'm going to go ahead and, and stick with this. The default is at soft light. If I wanted it to be a little deeper, I would hit overlay here. I could adjust the opacity. But I think what I'm going to do is just keep it right where it was at 70% in soft light mode. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for one of the other overlays here just to give it even a little bit more tone but I want this time to have it sort of create the tone around my subject who's in the center so I want more of the tone to be on the sides, the top, the bottom, etc. So I'm going to select Summer Light here and I'm going to lower that opacity to let's see maybe about 36 Summer Light has most of its color concentrated on the edges. If I wanted to get rid of any more, I would just simply go into the mask. With black, I would use a soft brush and I would just start painting into that mask. But I'm actually happy with how this is looking. So I think I'm just going to stick with Blended Mocha here in Summer Light. Let me see what Transitional would look like as well, just to see what it, what it would be like to add a little bit of blue into that sky. You know, I kind of like that, but I'm going to lower its opacity as well. So now I have three different overlays turned on. And if you're someone who likes to edit more cleanly, maybe you wouldn't do this. But I wanted people to have the option to have a lot of different overlays running or not running so you could build color as you saw fit with an image. There's warm overlays and cool overlays and overlays that show a simulation of light happening directionally. There's a lot of different choices that you have with editing your image. This is what I'm going to work with though right now. So that's what I feel like I want to add for the overlays. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to say delete the hidden layers just to get rid of the ones that we're not using and sort of clean up my layers. Next I'm going to go down here to the optional bonus actions. 
And again, these are created for people who wanted to start with a straight out of camera image and maybe want to do the bulk of their editing using just these overlays and actions alone. So now I'm going to go here to add a little more contrast. This is Big Bump. And as you can see, it really enhanced my contrast here. If I didn't like that, I could always change the opacity, but I, I like how it's looking. Uh, next, I might just opt to lighten the darks just a little bit. So I'm going to press play here. And I'm going to lower that way down because on the whole I, I kind of enjoy having some fairly dark darks. And I'm going to paint into this mask with a soft black brush right here and bring back the contrast so that I can separate him off of the background. Just using a soft black brush. I'm not being fussy with it at all. I'm just keeping the opacity rather low and painting right on in there. This is a golden flare that's also a bonus action. Press this. Now it defaults to landing right in the center of the image. You simply select your Move tool, and we're going to place this right here, like the sun setting here behind this hill, which is actually happening, but we're just going to accentuate some of the pretty color that's, that's there. If you didn't like any of that, you would again just paint into that mask using a soft black brush, but I like it. Um, I'm going to go now here to Selective Sharpen. I'm going to bring out some of that detail. This time, because the mask is black, I'm going to paint into it using a white brush. Because the rule of masking is that basically if you have white here, you can see anything. If it's black, you can't see any of the, of the adjustments. So you have to paint with black to not see something that's there. And you paint with white in order to reveal something. So we're going to reveal that sharpening by painting in using this white brush, showing that adjustment. OK, I kind of like how that's looking. Just adding a little more sharpness and detail. If you wanted to add a lot more sharpness and detail, you would need to go into my foundation set and purchase the extra sharp detail brush. But this does a pretty nice job just a little more subtle. Um, now I'm going to add a little bit of soft saturation. I'm going to take a little bit of that saturation off of his hands. Again, this is white. All that saturation showing. I'm going to mask out a little bit of it here on, on that skin tone down there. Maybe a little on that cheek. Again, I'm not fussy about it. Now I'm going to also see what vibrance looks like. And I'll toggle. And yeah, I like how that vibrant effect is. But again, I'm going to remove a little bit of it on his skin tones. Maybe even a little on his shirt. So I'm just painting very quickly. I'm literally painting. I'm not worrying. I'm not fussing about is it perfect. I'm not making, you know, uh, sure that I, I stay within the lines. I'm just masking out, building up a layer of what I, of, of taking out some of that vibrance here just with using a soft black brush. All right. Uh, I think I'm pretty happy with this edit. Let me show you quickly the before and after. So here's the after. There's our before. Now I've done this pretty quickly using simply overlays and these bonus actions. Thank you so much for watching this demo. I'd love to see your work in my group, the JD Beautiful World Actions and Overlays group. Please share it there. Love to hear from you and see your work. All right, thank you so much.